Spirituality creates influence in the church, but success gives you greater influence in the marketplace. And make no mistake about it, the marketplace is the primary concern for the expansion of the kingdom. Welcome to 83K Nation. Dr. Keith Johnson here, your Christian success strategist. This show is all about empowering you with the strategies, skills, tactics, and tools to help you reach your next personal, professional, and financial summits to increase your influence, impact, and income fast. You cannot fully maximize your potential without money, why? because it takes money to get skill training. It takes money to go to school. You cannot fully, again, the key word is fully, achieve your dreams without money. You see my friend, favor. Some people say, I'm just gonna claim the favor of God. You see, favor can only take you so far. At some point, your dream is going to cost you money. Welcome to our 83K Nation show. I'm Dr. Keith Johnson, your success strategist. Today we're gonna to be talking about money maximizes your potential. Three Fs to climbing your 83K mountain. Here on the 83K show, we are all about empowering you to aim at setting really big money goals and quickly increasing your income to make more money in a short amount of time. We wanna help you earn 83K extra a year or 7K per month, 1700 extra per week. We also wanna help some of you reach 83K per month, which is $19,000 per week, $2,700 per day. In this series, I'm going to talk about the three statements of our 83K mantra. It's face it, faith it, focus on it. During the next few broadcasts, I'm going to break each one of those three points down for you. Once you get this, your financial breakthroughs will start popping like popcorn. Let's hit the first one, face it. Face what? Your money realities. Bonnie and I were $180,000 in credit card debt. We didn't even know that we were in that much debt. You say, how in the world did that happen? You see, we thought like many people that if we just ignored our money problems and we just kept our eyes on God, kept tithing, going to church, praying, doing what was right, that somehow our debt would just magically disappear. It didn't. As a matter of fact, our debt got bigger. What we failed to realize was this important truth. Faith is not ignoring the facts. Now, I want to say that again. Faith is not ignoring the facts. Faith isn't denying the mountain does not exist. Faith isn't about burying your head in the sand, wishing, hoping, rubbing a rabbit's foot that something might change. As a matter of fact, it didn't do the rabbit very much good, did it? Faith, real faith, faces the facts. Faith sees the current facts of what looks impossible and sees what is possible with the right thinking coupled with disciplined effort. The 83K power secret that you must embrace today is this. You must face it to faith it. When I talk to business people, I have to tell them that they need to be more spiritual. When I talk to spiritual people, I need to remind them that they need to be more logical. You cannot change what you're unwilling to face. If you don't face the facts, 
you end up living a life of delusion or you just end up living a big lie. You see, many times we go to church and we ask people, hey, how are you doing? And people will say the traditional, oh, I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. I am fine. And I think, really? You don't have a million dollars yet for retirement. You're living paycheck to paycheck. Your house is in foreclosure. Your car's being repossessed. Your children don't want to serve God. And you and your spouse are on the verge of divorce. Uh, but you're fine. You're favored. And you're blessed. Hmm. Now here's a big warning. There is a piece of you that wants to live a life of fiction, fantasy, and fallacy, not truth and hardcore facts. You see, my friend, I believe in the power of positive thinking. Oh yeah, I believe that our attitude does determine our altitude in life. But positive thinking and thinking positive alone is not always the answer. You see, I always believe in the positive negative thinking. Oh yeah, sometimes we got to look at a situation and think negative. What if some negative outcomes happen? And so therefore, if I think negative, I know I need to over prepare so that I perform well. Just saying, I'm going to perform well, I'm going to perform well, I'm going to perform well, doesn't mean you will, because sometimes we can underprepare ourselves. So we got the power of positive thinking, which is awesome. We, we also need to embrace the power of negative thinking, so we prepare for the moment. And then we also need what? The power of reality thinking. <laughs> yeah, we have to face reality, you see. When it comes to money, one of the realities that we have to face is that maybe we're not prospering and thriving like we should because we have big egos. You see, when you have a big ego about money, Here's what you'll tend to say. You'll tend to say or think, oh, I know everything about money. I know all the scriptures about money and I don't need to learn. See, that's a big ego. Ego says I don't need to learn. Where humility says, hmm, my bank accounts are low. I'm not doing very well financially. Therefore, maybe I just don't know anything about money and I need to learn. Now watch this. Big egos equal small bank accounts. However, small egos that say, hey, I don't know. I need to learn more. Teach me equals big bank accounts. You see, my friend, I've been in rooms with billionaires. And I've noticed how humble they are around other people who have a lot of money. I've also been in rooms of poor and middle class people. And when the subject of money is brought up, how arrogant they are, how, how prideful they are when it comes to money. Many of them just completely shut themselves off from learning. You see, in my seminars, I ask people a simple money literacy question to see how much they know about money and to reveal how much they don't know about money. So I ask this question, what is your number one expense? And I just wait and I stand beside the whiteboard and I say, come on, name your number one expense. And I start writing them out on the whiteboard. And they'll come up with the traditional things we always hear, right? Like, oh, it's my house payment. It's my car. It's, it's electric. It, and they go on and on and on and on about the different expenses that they have. But you know what's funny? Hardly ever has anybody given me, I'm talking about crowds of thousands of people, almost nobody knows the top two expenses that they have. 
Let's see if you do. You see, first of all, let's start off with the number two greatest expense you have is taxes. Ah, oh, yeah. Many of you are being taxed because you work a job. You're being taxed at the highest rate. Some of you are being taxed at anywhere between 30 to 50 percent. When you look at the big scheme of things, how much you pay for taxes in a year. 30 to 50 percent of your income is gone due to taxes. Now you ready? Jump, drum roll, please. Your number one expense is this. Not knowing how to make a million dollars a year. Oh, think about this. If you don't know how to make $83,000 per month times 12 equals $1 million dollars, what you don't know is causing you pain. It's costing you. So let's say you're making $100,000 a year and you're struggling. You're living paycheck to paycheck. And by the way, most people who are only making $100,000 a year are living paycheck to paycheck. Because what? They don't know how to make a million a year. So... It's costing a person who makes $100,000 a year $90,000 per year because they don't know how to make a million dollars. Now, when that dawns on you, something within you should say, oh, man, I need to learn how to make a million dollars a year. It should create an urgency in you, man. I need to stop losing $900,000 a year. I'm shocked and surprised at how many people don't have a sense of, sense of urgency that says, I need to learn more. And that's why I'm bringing up the point that ego is in the way. You think you know everything, but when you start realizing, whoa, wait a minute, I don't know everything. I need to learn. The first thing you got to do is you got to face the reality of money. And here's what I need you to understand. You are a spiritual being in a material world that functions and operates by money. Man, when you, when you grasp this, this will change your life. It changed my life. Yeah, just Coming to this reality, I'm a spiritual being, no doubt about it. However, I live in this material world and down here on earth, it operates by something called money. Now, I want to show you what I call the money connection graphic. So if you're listening by podcast, if you think of a wagon wheel, and you, in the center, you have the center of the wheel, and then the wagon has spokes that come out. In the center of the wheel is money. And all the spokes are different things that cost money. So as we look at this money connection graphic or picture, we begin to see that literally everything in our life is connected to money. Let's start off up here. God connected to money. Do you realize you can't even go to church without money? Oh yeah. Bibles cost money. It cost you money to go to church. Oh yeah. yeah. So the, oh, the church is free. No, it's not free. It still costs you to go to church. Mhm. Mm you had to get up in the morning you had to wash your hair, right? Everybody wants to look clean for church. You want to put on your Sunday best. You had to get up. You, you had to run water. Water cost what? Money. <laughs> you, you, had to, you had to wash your hair with shampoo. Shampoo cost what? Money. You had to put on clothes. 
that costs what? Money. You had to put on deodorant that costs what? Money. You put on perfume that costs what? Money. And you haven't even left, the, left for church yet. And it cost you money. Then you what? You jumped in your car. That costs what? Money. And, and the car has, you have to pay insurance on the car. It costs money. You have to put gas in the car to go to church, which costs what? Money. You get into the church. And guess what they're going to ask you for? Money. <laughs> now, now they're going to tell you, oh, money's not important. I'm like, well, why do you ask for it then? Well, why take up an offering if money's not important? So we see here the connection. There's a, there's a money connection, even with God, with going to church, with growing our, ourselves spiritually. It costs money. It costs money to have fun, go to the movies. Uh, it costs money to, to go out to eat. It costs money to go to a concert, to, to go to a play. It, it costs money to have fun. It costs money to go on vacations. It costs money for food. It costs money for water. Water costs money. It costs money for housing. It costs money for your car. Insurance costs money. Gas costs money. Your job costs money. Oh, yeah, your, your job costs you money. you got to pay for your kids to go to, uh, what, uh, nursery school. you got to pay for your kids to be, have babysitters. You, it, your, your, your job costs you money in gas. Your business costs money. You need money to make your business uh, effective. You need money for marketing for your business. Money. You need money to pay your electric bills. You need money for your kids. Your kids cost money. They need shoes. They need food. <laughs> they need all kinds of money, 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 money. You need money for school. You need money for date night to take your wife out on a great date and enjoy each other. You need money for clothes to put on your body. You need money for your future. You need money for retirement. And you literally look at the money connection and everything in your life is connected to money. Money is connected to everything. I want you to get this. Money is connected to everything. And Solomon said in Ecclesiastics 10 verse 19, he says, money answers everything. So if it's a thing, money can answer it. Wow. So let's repeat this. You are a spiritual being living in a money world. That is reality. You see, money is called a currency because money likes to move. Right? So it moves from low energy to high energy people and projects. That's why money doesn't like to move to lazy people. Money moves towards high energy, high dreaming, high believing people and projects. It, it moves from the ignorant to the wise. So get this, money moves from low energy to high energy people and projects. It moves from ignorant people into the hands of what? Wise people who know a lot about money. You see, people who don't want money, money moves away from them and moves towards people who do want money, who understand the importance of money. And that's why a lot of spiritual people, money stays away from them because they simply don't want it and don't think it's important. You see, some people today, they try to negatively label me as a prosperity preacher. But I'm actually a success strategist who just happens to be a Christian who used the Bible as my success blueprint. 
as, as my success book. And so what I really am, I'm really a potential preacher, if you want to call me that. I'm all about maximizing your potential. Now, money empowers you to maximize your potential. I have a coaching mantra that says, your potential. Potential is not who you are right now, but who you can be. It's not what you're doing right now, but what you can do. It's not what you have right now, but what you can have. It's not who you're helping right now, but who you can help in the future. And so you got to understand is that your potential is greater than your past. Your potential is greater than your pain. Your potential is greater than your opposition. Your potential is greater than your lack. Your potential is greater than your current paycheck. And you see, my friend, you need things to grow your maximum potential and fulfill your God-given purpose. You cannot maximize your potential without things. Hmm. So therefore, you cannot fully achieve your God-given potential without money. Now, the key word here is fully. You can do it in part without money, but you cannot fully achieve your God-given potential without money. Dr. J here. For 31 years, I've been recording how people from all walks of life started with nothing, often less than nothing, and became self-made millionaires. This research was organized into a simple formula that takes an hour a day for 11 days to complete. Not only was this what helped me eliminate $180,000 of credit card debt while building the life of my dreams, but I'm so confident that this will work for you that I've done something special. I'm giving you a free access to the financial fast track formula. While this is a $1,200 program, if you can say at the end of your experience that you now have the blueprint to drastically increase your income, you can keep the program for only $97 instead of the original $1,200 price tag. If not, simply cancel on day 12, no questions asked. Plus, you can keep the materials just my way of saying thank you for giving it a shot. Obviously, I can't offer this special for long, so make sure you go to 83knation.com formula and get on the fast track to skyrocketing your income today. You cannot fully maximize your potential without money, why? Because it takes money to get skill training. It takes money to go to school. It takes money to buy books to learn. It takes money to hire the absolute best coaches that you need to grow who you are, to become who you're supposed to become. And we're, we're taught throughout scriptures that you can't do it by yourself. You need help. Well, people who are the best at what they do are going to charge you what? They're going to charge you money to help you. You need successful people, highly successful people, to impart into you, to mentor you, to be consultants to you. And people who are really successful at what they do, guess what? They are going to charge you money. So get this. You need money. I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm trying to get this into your heart, beyond your head and into your heart. You need money to maximize your potential. Without money, you can't do it. Now watch this. You cannot fully achieve your dreams without money. 
You see, my friend, favor. Some people say, I'm just going to claim the favor of God. You see, favor can only take you so far. At some point, your dream is going to cost you money. Let's dive into this a little bit further. You cannot fully, again, the key word is fully, express your love without money. Wow. Now, I've made my wife breakfast in bed. I've told her that I love her and gave her a kiss on the lips every morning, or I should say almost every morning, for 32 years. Hmm. Now think about that. 32 years of making her breakfast in bed when I'm home, giving her a kiss on the lips, telling her first thing in the morning, she's beautiful. She's had that for 32 years. But even at that, that doesn't fully communicate what's in my heart in order to express fully my love for that gal. This is the gal that took care of me when I couldn't even do for myself when I had a heart attack. I could do nothing, couldn't even go to the bathroom by myself. And now I, I want to express fully my love for her. I've been kissing her for 32 years. <laughs> well, what can I do? Hmm. So I started saving money because our 30th wedding anniversary was coming up. And I started saving money for three years because on our 30th anniversary, I wanted to walk into a diamond store. We were gonna be in the Bahamas. I wanted to walk into a diamond store and I wanted to tell my wife, pick out any diamond, any ring that you want for our anniversary. It's gonna be my gift to you. Oh boy. At first, you know, she went over and she picked out something small. I says, is, when you look in the store, is that what you really want? I want you to pick out what you want. Of course, she looks over at this 7.5 carat diamond that is, has a special cut where every cut in the diamond is cut into a heart. I thought, wow, now that's, now that's something that is expressing how much I love you. And she looks at and she looks at me with those little puppy eyes, says, can, can I get this one? And of course, it was all over. It was done. Do you know how good that made me feel to be able to pull that money that I had saved and pay for that ring to express the full love of my, in my heart for her. You see, my friend, you can't even fully grow your organization without money. If you want to grow and scale, you will always need money to increase your marketing, to hire more people to help you, and money to buy property or tools to increase your speed. If you're listening to me and you're a business owner, you cannot fully express your appreciation to your team without money. I mean, telling your team, hey, good job. Uh, uh, thank you so much for what you do. And, and uh, boy, uh, come have a free dinner for our Christmas party. Christmas parties and good jobs and pats on the back will only motivate your team so much. Let me tell you what will motivate them. More money. You see, money gives you more ability. It gives you the ability to make choices. It gives you the ability to control your life. And it gives you the feeling of confidence. See, when you have, a, when you have the ability to make choices and the ability to have control of your life because you have money, 
you feel confident. But when you don't have money and you, and you don't have choices, you're forced to go to a job that you hate. You're, you're forced to do things that you don't want to do based on money. Ladies and gentlemen, that's called mammon. Money is controlling you, not you dominating and controlling money. You see, with money, my friend, you have the ability to give, to show love, to invest in others, to invest in assets, to pay your bills ahead of time, like Christians should, to solve problems with that money, to take necessary vacations and have money to enjoy the life the abundant life that God has given us. Now, as we close, I want you to remember this. Psalm 35, verse 27 says, God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. But then the scripture also says that God has pity on the poor. Who are the poor? Those who are without. And my friend, like I've been saying over and over, poor people are without, but also middle class, they're without. Because most people living in middle class are $2,000 to $5,000 short every year. And that's why they keep going into debt every single year because they don't have enough money to maintain the middle class lifestyle. They're poor. Middle class people are the new poor. And we got to wake up to this and realize that we've got to face money realities. The question I have for you, which one do you want to be? Do you want to be the person God has pity on? Or do you want to be the person that gives God pleasure because you are a prosperous person in the earth? I love the movie Chariots of Fire. And there's a place in the movie where Eric Little said, When I run... I feel God's pleasure. You know, my friend, when you prosper and you multiply your money, you then maximize your God-given potential and you bring God pleasure. Hey, please do us a favor. If you believe that success is your spiritual and moral obligation, I want you to take a quick moment Subscribe so you don't miss a single one of these broadcasts. Like and share with your followers. More importantly, if you're listening by podcast, subscribe, rate, and write a review to help us reach more visitors. And remember this before we go. Solomon said, money answers all things. Face the reality that you need more money in order to thrive here on earth. Join us next week as we continue this series of Face It, Faith It, and Focus on It. This is Dr. Keith Johnson. Until next time, Godspeed.